Today I'm gonna do something I've never done in all the years I'm in Uganda. Take a train. For the very simple reasons, previously there was no train. Even though Uganda has a train for more than a hundred years. In the British Empire they built the so-called lunatic railway, because, uh, which was named because it had to go through swarms, uh, angry tribes, uh, workers eaten by lions, so it cost a fortune to build it. Uh, and it ran all the way from Mombasa in Kenya, through Kenya and Uganda to the Congolese border. But after the colonial times, the railways became defunct. And in the early 2000s, the private company Grand Rift Rally Railway got a license to operate the railway. And they promised to revitalize this railway with a $13 billion loan from the World Bank. Uh, 20 years later, all that money has been gone. Nobody knows where it went. But one thing is for sure, not to the railway, because that is still the same as it was before. Uh, so the governments of uh, Kenya and Uganda got pretty uh, upset with it and they said, you know what, let's start from scratch. And they called the Chinese and said, can you build us a brand new railway? And about a week later, the Chinese opened the Chinese created and funded railway between Mombasa and Nairobi. It literally runs 10 meters next to the old Rift Valley Railway. And it's kind of odd because the only part of the railway that was still functioning was Mombasa to Nairobi. I have taken an epic train ride uh, where in the morning you wake up, you go to the dining car, you get a full English breakfast served from real China while you look at zebras and giraffes outside your window. And it costs about $10 for a first class ticket. Um, so the first part of the new railway has been uh, constructed, but now they have to build the part from Nairobi to the Ugandan border. But the Chinese government has become much more reluctant in providing loans to African countries. At the same time, African countries are much more careful accepting loans on bad terms from China because of the debt threats. So this part is still not being built. And for Uganda, it doesn't make sense to build a railway from, from Kampala to basically nowhere. So nothing has happened in the past years. But the traffic jam in Kampala is getting worse by the day. Kampala is booming. Uh, and more and more middle class can afford a car. So every day there is an epic traffic jam from the outskirts of the city into the city center. And in the afternoon it can take you up to three hours just to get out of the city. So uh, a few years ago they started to revitalize Ugandan railways and in 2018 it started to run officially. Uh, every morning it takes a, a run from this uh, town, Namanve station, uh, somewhere in the outskirts of Kampala. Goes to Kampala and in the evening there are a few runs uh, back from the city Travel-wise, uh, this railway doesn't make much sense. For a tourist, it doesn't bring you anywhere. But it gives you a very interesting backstage tour of Kampala. You see some parts of the city that you otherwise never get to see. And when you start to think that Kampala is all about four-star hotels with swimming pools and nice luxury meals, uh, and craft beers being made and a vibrant nightlife, it also shows you that not everybody is benefiting the fullest from this development. Another good reason to take this train is that while everything in this country is always later, you spend half your life waiting for things that might or might not come, the train runs exactly to schedule. At the same time, the real tourist attraction, that will be you. Because it doesn't happen so often that a tourist takes a train and visits this part of town, so enjoy it! <laughs> 